So you have decided to take on the task of replacing the headlight bulb in a Chevrolet HHR? Good for you. This video will hopefully help make that process go smoothly. Unfortunately, the easiest way to access the bulb is to remove the front wheel behind it, but with a few minutes and a few tools, you can do it. We are going to keep the tools used to a minimum, and the jack I will use is the factory supplied one, which should be here in the rear compartment. Simply take out the floorboard, then loosen and remove the spare tire compartment hold down and lift out the spare tire cover. Now you should be able to lift the donut spare up and out of the way, which reveals the jack. It is held in place by a wing nut, so unscrew it and set it aside. Then you can remove the car jack. If you have a floor jack, you should probably use that instead, but for simplicity's sake, I will use the factory jack. Here are the tools needed to do the job. First, we have the factory jack. The lug wrench is attached, but we will not be using it. And I know I said we were keeping the tools used to a minimum, but if you are removing and reinstalling your wheel, it is best to use a torque wrench to know that you get those lug nuts back on proper. We also have a 3 quarter inch socket and extension for the lug nuts and the jack screw. Next, we have a smaller ratchet with a 7 millimeter socket for the three 7 millimeter screws in the wheel well cover. A claw hammer. This one is missing its handle. The smaller the better. I will be using the claw side to pull the four plastic push pins that are also in the wheel well cover. There are a couple of special tools made for this, but I am trying to keep the tools used as simple as possible within reason. Finally, we have a jack stand. These are not very expensive, and anytime you are going to jack up a vehicle, remove the wheel, and put parts of your body underneath said vehicle, you want more holding power than what the jack supplies by itself. Do not do this job without a jack stand. The vehicle should not be running. On mostly level ground, transmission in park or first gear for manual transmission. Parking brake engaged. Now, break all five lug nuts loose. Do not take them off yet. We are just loosening them while the wheel is still on the ground, so the stress of breaking them loose is not on the drive axle. Now it is time to jack it up. We have broken the lug nuts loose. Well, first of all, we put the vehicle uh, uh, parking brake engaged, engine not running. We have uh, broken lug nuts loose. On HHRs, they have a jacket point for the front passenger side, which is what we're doing today, uh, right here behind the front wheel. It's indicated with a little arrow, and the jack has a little U channel that uh, has a, a, a little cross member that fits right up in there perfectly. So we've got the vehicle up in the air high enough for the wheel to disengage from the ground. Now we're going to put our jack stand under frame piece. Get this camera detached here. Frame piece on the front. Which is a perfect spot to put floor jack or jack stand. Sorry about the noise. This frame piece right here has a left and right hand side. Right about here, where there's a, a hole, there's a kind of flat spot. That's perfect for jack stand or, uh, or floor jack if you're using floor jack, which is much faster than using the factory jack. Okay, we now have the wheel off. Remember, the lug nuts were broke loose while the wheel was still in contact with the ground, so we don't try to break loose 100 foot-pounds of torque off of five lug nuts. 
while counting on the drive axle to hold it in place, which will break something, most likely. So with the wheel removed, we now have access to the wheel well liner. This is the part that is hiding access to the headlights. We have four GM style push pins. They're made of plastic and they have little barbs on, on the inside. And they hold in place pretty tightly. There's one here, and one here, and two underneath. One here, it's actually missing in my case, and one here. Then, in addition to those four push pins, we have three seven millimeter screws. There's one right here on the underside. Put them back up here. There's another one here, and then one up here. The passenger side is the harder one of the two to do because this liner has an extra little part right here that fits over a lip, but it's not that difficult. I'll show you here in a moment how to peel it back so you have access to the uh, headlight compartment, which is basically right behind this. Here's a clip of using a claw hammer to slide up underneath the head of one of these plastic push pins and pull it out. This is much easier than trying to use a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and also less damaging to the pin itself. Now that we have the push pins and the screws out of the wheel well liner, we can go ahead and pull the bottom of it free. And if we bend it back a little bit and put our hand up underneath the back side, we'll be able to pull that upper lip piece on out. Now next we're going to bend the lower section of it up and over the brake rotor and uh, brake caliper. Please be very careful not to run the sharp edge of this liner right across the uh, hydraulic hose for the brake caliper though, as we don't want to cut into that hose at all. Now that this panel is bent back, we have access to where the headlight assembly is, as well as the other front lights, such as the fog light assembly, which is the lower section if your car is so equipped with fog light. If it is, it will be right in this area, right here. And up above that, off to the right, almost out of view, is the turn signal light bulb. And then right here is the headlight bulb. I wanted to show you if you're doing the swap over from standard headlight bulbs to uh, LEDs, what you pull out of the vehicle should be something like this. This is a standard Sylvania H13, or also known as the 9008, I believe, uh, headlight bulb assembly. It is important to not touch the glass with your fingers. We can touch the metal, we can touch the plastic, but don't touch the glass bulb part with your finger uh, or any part of your skin because the oils from our skin can potentially cause it to degrade rapidly. Um, when you pull this out, especially if it's been in there for a long time, there's a really good chance that this red rubber o-ring gasket around it is going to stay stuck to your headlight assembly on the inside up, up under here in the car. So. Um, it doesn't hurt to, before you put in your new bulb, whether it's LED or, or just standard replacement, it doesn't hurt to put your finger up in there and feel around, see if that gasket is, if there is a gasket stuck up in there. If there is, your new bulb will most likely not seat properly because double gaskets are just too thick. So if you do find it up in there, just gently pry it off with your finger. It should come off very easily. If it doesn't, you're probably, probably pulling on something other than the gasket and get it out of the way. Our replacement bulb is an LED assembly. Hope you can get a good shot of it there. Let's turn the flash on. Um, well, maybe we don't need a flash. Anyway, um, and you can see it has a gasket on it as well. All replacement bulbs should come with their own gasket. And instead of plugging directly into the back of the assembly like a standard bulb, like this bulb here, the pigtail plugs directly into the back of the bulb assembly, and but with the LED, 
it's got the the heat sink on the back so it needs to have the pigtail separate uh, coming out the side of the heat sink but there's plenty of room up in there for it um, the orientation of your bulb is kind of important for the proper aiming of the headlight beam the instructions I saw from where I bought it said that the edges where the, the, the actual LED elements are need to face east and west um, or if you want to refer to it as a clock definition nine o'clock and three o'clock so that's why I actually took this one apart again I already had the bulb installed but wanted to make this video and also I had mine oriented north and south uh, instead of east west um, you know, on this HHR, whenever I've got these bulbs oriented properly, the pigtail is facing straight up, which actually works better for keeping the pigtail more out of the way of the heat sink. That's another thing. Most heat sinks for these things have a, a cooling fan. This one does as well. You don't want the, the pigtail, the wire, or anything to be pushed directly up against the back of it. You'll be blocking the... Um... Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry about the interruption neighbor there very neighborly people very nice um, so yeah make sure that the the bulbs because you got LED bulbs well bulbs <laughs> you got little LED segments on each side of the the replacement uh, headlight assembly make sure that they're facing nine o'clock and three o'clock or east and west and that should help for proper aiming of the beam did forget to mention the um, removal installation of the bulb. The bulb, once you get your hand up on, under there to access the bulb, you turn counterclockwise about a third of a turn, quarter to a third of a turn, and then pulls just straight out of the, the, the socket hole. Again, make sure that red gasket or whatever orange gasket or whatever color it is, it might be black in some cases, uh, make sure the gasket comes out with it. If it doesn't, put your finger back up there and retrieve it. Um, the new bulb will uh, go in um, once you get the, the tabs lined up. There's three little tabs that line up with the uh, socket. Um, once you, I found it with the LED bulb, uh, it can go in multiple different orientations as far as the, uh, around the dial of the clock. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I had to take this apart again because I had mine in one orientation which actually had the bulbs facing uh, north and south, or 12 o'clock and then 6 o'clock, which is exactly the opposite direction it's supposed to be facing. Um, so I had to rotate it around to a different spot, slot it in, turn the quarter to the third turn to lock it in place, and now it's good. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble the wheel well liner. Gently pull it back up over, bend it over the rotor and brake caliper assembly. Again, being careful not to get the sharp edge of it up against the hydraulic brake hose and accidentally slice it. This notch needs to go up in here. Just kind of give it some pressure, pop right up in there. And that, I mean, it's basically in position now. We just need to reinstall the four push pins and the three seven millimeter uh, screws. We've got a screw here, screw here, one screw up underneath, and a push pin here push pin here, two push pins underneath. Push pins are real easy. I'll show you one right now. Just not line up the hole, give it some pressure with your thumb, should pop right in just like that. Again, line up the hole, give it some pressure, pops right in. Piece of cake. Of course, put your wheel back on when you're done with that. Do not tighten the lug nuts to full torque just get them snug while the wheels in the air again we do not want to use we don't we don't want to put major pressure on the uh, axle for tightening the lug nuts these lug nuts need to be tightened to 100 foot pounds of torque that's why I'm using a cheap torque wrench from Harbor Freight I do recommend if you're doing lug nuts you do get it use a torque wrench if you can and like I said these are supposed to be 100 foot pounds of torque for each lug nut, there's five lug nuts on this vehicle once we get the wheel back in place. Um, you do not start torquing these things down to that severe torque until you have the wheel back on with lug nuts just snugged 
and drop back on the ground, the tire back on the ground. So we use the, the tire being held by the ground as holding it back to, to handle that kind of torque, not the axle. If we do it in the air, the axle takes that brunt. Unless you have an impact wrench, those can put that kind of torque on it without doing damage to the axle. But that's basically it. It's a pain in the rear to do, I know. Uh, but it's not that difficult if you know what you got, what you're getting into. Just got to jack it up and get the wheel off, and take this cover bend out of the way, and then you have access to it. Good luck. I almost forgot an, another important step of doing replacement headlights, especially if you're switching over to LEDs on the HHR, and that is to aim the beam probably down a little bit if you're going to LEDs because they tend to be pretty bright. So as far as I have been able to find out there's only one adjustment for each side and it's a little difficult to see down there. It's a Allen wrench head. Lefty Lucy or counterclockwise is to lower, righty tighty is to raise the um, beam level. It's something you have to adjust while having the headlights shining prefer prefer preferably at night on something like a garage door or a wall or something. On the driver's side, it's a similar location, but it's a little bit difficult to get to because it's under, you have to slide up underneath this uh, air conditioning hose here it's right back in there, but as long as you have a long extension, it's just fine. That's why they have the bend here in the in the, the pipe for the air conditioner. It is an Allen wrench 